Hi guys, welcome back. So let's just have a quick recap on what we created in lesson one. Okay, there's our super, super basic chord progression and drums so far for our modern 80s track. So what we're going to do in this lesson is add some gated reverb, which was very, very popular in the 80s as well. And I'm going to be showing you some 80s style reverb plugins as well, although those plugins are paid for, so I'm going to be showing you alternative ones as well. So if you're not sure what gated reverb is, it's when the reverb tail stops suddenly. I'm just going to show you some great plugins for this exact thing, this exact style. So we're just going to go to Google and go to Valhalla, Valhalla plugins. And you've got all these kind of vintage verbs and Valhalla plate. You can see what they're for. Look, best for warm and dense reverbs from the 60s and 70s. The vintage one is really good for old school reverbs. Uh, but some of these are paid for, so I'm not going to be using those. I did use them the first time around. But obviously recreating this track, I need you to be able to follow along as well. So I did use a vintage verb, I think. But what we'll do is we'll use Valhalla Supermassive, which is free. You can see down here. So if you want to follow along with the exact reverb that I use, then download Valhalla Supermassive for free and install that. Obviously, if you're just watching along, you don't need to bother doing that. Uh, these plugins, by the way, do come with a free 45 seconds before it fades out. So you can actually, and I'll show you in Cubase, you can actually use the full plugin of the paid for version. And as long as you bounce down the kick with the reverb on it, within 45 seconds, you've then got an audio version of it. So you can actually do it that way around. So for example, kick, and let's add in our Valhalla plugin, which is under other, I think. Yeah, so for example, vintage verb, you can go to these uh, presets, concert hall, 1970s, and that kind of thing. Or you can go to gated reverbs and choose something like, you know, gated snare, or whatever, and it will change all the colors, it will change all the settings, and you'll get a real sort of retro sound. And you can see here that it reverb phase out every 45 seconds, so apply your reverb if you want to, and bounce down the drum in question if you wish. Or you can just pay for the plugin, they are very, very good, $50 I think it is. So I think I had this on Chamber uh, when I first made this, uh, 1980s, and a medium gate, I think it was. Gated reverb, medium gate. And that's going to sound like this. And that's on 100% mix, so we don't want that. We want to bring this right down to about 17 or so. That's the kind of sound we're after for the kick. So we're going to recreate that because we don't want to use this one because it's a paid for plugin. So I want everyone to follow along. So we're going to use, I'll just take that off and use Supermassive, the free version. We're going to try and recreate that really sort of dirty, modulated, gated reverb. And we're going to put a gate after this reverb as well. So we cut off the, the tail quite a bit. So let's bring our mix down on Supermassive, about 20% or so. We don't really want much width on a kick drum uh, reverb, not at all, so I'll bring that right down as well. Let's just play around with this delay and warp settings. We don't want delay, let's bring that right down, maybe about 20 milliseconds or something. It's starting to sound very retro. I think I just basically messed around with these settings until I got something that I like the sound of. Density. It's just a matter of playing around. And the mod rate, that gives that funny effect you can hear. Which is a bit too much at the moment, so we'll bring that down to 0.35, thereabouts. And that's the depth of the modulation. It's a bit too much at the moment, so we'll Turning it up seems to make it a bit less obvious. And we'll just use some EQ to sort of uh, shape this reverb as well. So 1980s, the reverbs were quite dark and also the synths were quite dark because the technology they were using back in the 80s didn't provide much top end. So we want to cut the EQ here a little bit. 
from 20,000 all the way down. And we want to take away some of the bottom end of that reverb so it's not so muddy. So something around there is what I would use. And the tail is a bit long for what we want. That obviously affects the tail quite a bit. Now we want a tail so we can actually gate it. So let's just have a go at gating it. Let's load up a gate. Just a stop plugin is fine. Should be under dynamics. And let's load up the gate. Now with a gate, you set the threshold and then anything that goes above the threshold will open the gate, i.e. let the sound through. And then when it goes back down below the threshold, it will shut the gate and therefore cut the sound off. And you've got, think up similar to a compressor where you've got attack and release, depending on how fast you want the gate to react. So let's basically go for quick attack, quickly as possible, and a quick release. And sometimes you have to play with the hold. Let's have a listen. Now we're going to move the threshold around. So with the threshold at minus seven, it's closed all the time. The red light shows that it's closed. When it goes green, it's open. And when it goes amber, it's sort of in the process of opening. And the hold function also applies to the amber. So the more I put it up um, without it cutting off, that is, the more of the tail it's cutting off. So if you go right down here, you hear more of the tail. And now you're cutting off the tail. So it's just a matter of balancing these. And if you use the hold, you get a bit more of the tail as well. So that's sounding quite 80s quite sort of lo-fi and the release is how quickly you want that tail to be chopped off so something around 45 milliseconds for that again it's one of these trial and error plugins you have to come in and mess around with all these settings and just get to know how to use it and how to get the sound that you want but the main controls are the threshold and the attack and release. So that's the reverb sorted. That's very 80s sounding. You could put Bit Crusher on that as well, but I don't want to go overboard here. Uh, and I just think this needs a little bit of EQ there. Give this EQ a little bit of um, boost at around 50 hertz, just to give a bit more thud to the sub. So a little trick you can do is to, with a parametric EQ, is just come to 50 hertz. This works in most genres of music. Have a really tight cue, so a really narrow band, so you're only affecting this band. And maybe just put it up like 3 dBs, 4 dBs, something like that. And you'll hear the sub come through really nicely, but it's only affecting this very small band of frequencies. So before and after. Definitely a bit more sub coming through there. So I'm just boosting just under 4 dBs at 50 hertz. Sounds like it's got a tiny bit of mud in it as well. So we can boost that to find the mud and then reduce it. You usually get a bit of mud around 250, roughly speaking. You can hear that stuff we don't really want. So we'll just reduce that slowly, or slightly, I should say. So again, we'll do it before and after that, before. That just sounds a little bit cleaner to me. And again, like I was saying with the 80s, not much top end. So let's just bring down the top end. And just not have that quite so bright. We don't want to overdo it, we want some click in there. Because the top end or the click of the kick is what makes it cut through quite a bit. So before and after EQ. Quite a bit nicer, I think. So let's go and do the same to our snare. 
So on the snare, I originally used vintage verb again. And I had it on ambience. I had color now. And I had gated snare as the preset choice. So we'll bring the mix down again. It always defaults to 100, bring it down to about 20%. Pre delayed 9 is about right. We want a very short decay. 0 0.3 seconds is fine. Let's just have a listen to it as it is. And without. You can hear that how that reverb tail is being gated quite a bit. That's exactly how the retro 80s sound is. Exactly what we're going for. The size and the attack and all that kind of stuff is all programmed into these presets here. But you can mess around with these if you want. Let's just take a bit of the low cut off. We'll add a bit of low cut. Because we don't want the reverb to be boomy down there. Make that slightly brighter. So that's what I ends up with with the paid for version. So let's just recreate that. So we'll bypass that. And we'll recreate this with the free version, which is Valhalla Supermassive. I did try and recreate these, by the way, with the stock plugins, but I didn't have as good results. But if you don't want to be installing plugins and all that kind of stuff, you can use the stock plugins if you wish. So Roomworks SC, plugins like that. So Valhalla Supermassive, we'll recreate this, 20% mix. The width is fine on a snare, that's absolutely fine because the bottom end of the mix is being taken up by the kick, so there's not too many lower frequencies in a snare to be messed up. Delay, definitely back down, right down. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit too much. You can hear the modulation on that. About 30, it's probably about right. Warp, Let's see what this does. It's just tightening it up a little bit. Feedback, the tail, so you can go as big as you want on that, and density, again just twiddle the knobs, see what they do, just get a slightly different tone, so maybe about 76, something like that, modulation rate, again it's a bit too much. So similar to the last one, probably 0.25, something like that, just for that retro sound. Maybe a bit of the EQ come off. Definitely want to take off the low end. Okay, let's do before and after with this super massive plugin. So now we just need to gate it, because we don't have a gating function in this supermassive plugin. So again, we're gonna add a gate, so dynamics, gate. And same as before, we'll just mess around with these settings until we get the desired tail. But again, we can start with a very, very quick attack. We'll probably go for something similar, 100 hold, something like that, and quick release. So let's mess around. So that's having no effect at all. It's letting all the signal through. When you start coming up to minus 20, it's starting to gate the tail. And again, it's a matter of sort of balancing with the hold as well. And release as well. Release does the tail, but the hold has a bit more of an effect on the tail. I find about 100 milliseconds on hold, maybe a touch more. And it's a balancing act on the threshold as well. You're balancing all these things to get the desired gated tail before the gate and after. So you can definitely hear the tail being gated there. So this is what we're left with.
music is now a bit loud, I think. Very 80s sounding drums and bring in the chords as well. Obviously it all needs to be balanced. That is basically how I achieved the 80s style reverb. So use 80s style plugins and then take off the top end is quite important. So make sure the reverb's got a bit of modulation on it and sort of lo-fi sounding and then gate the reverb to get that 80s sound. And yeah, I think we're um, in a position to sort of start adding a bass line to this. So in the next lesson, we'll start making a 80s style bass line and adding this to what we've got so far. All the best guys, bye bye.